Did you know that trying to be liked by everyone is one of the quickest ways to lose yourself? It's a trap so many of us fall into, bending our actions, words and even our values just to avoid the sting of disapproval. But here's the truth. The best path to real freedom is learning to accept that not everyone will like you. If you want to live authentically, confidently and without the constant need for validation, you need to embrace this reality. Because avoiding dislike is not only impossible, it's exhausting. In this video, we'll dive deep into the liberating power of accepting dislike, setting boundaries, handling criticism in the workplace and personal relationships, and even how to navigate the harsh world of social media without losing your peace of mind. Whether you're someone who struggled with criticism or simply want to stand more firmly in your own truth, this journey will help you build resilience and inner strength. Number one, the power of accepting dislike. Imagine waking up one day and feeling free, free from the weight of other people's opinions, free from the constant need for approval. That kind of liberation is the key to living authentically pursuing your passions, and becoming the person you truly want to be. There's a unique power that comes with accepting that not everyone will like you, and that's perfectly okay. It's this acceptance that allows you to step fully into your own life, rather than living under the shadow of what others think. Think about a time when you were excited to share an idea or a part of yourself with others, only to be met with criticism or disapproval. Maybe it was that moment you posted something on social media and a wave of negative comments followed. At first, the happiness you felt, the joy of sharing, quickly faded away as the sting of others' opinions began to settle in. But imagine if, instead of being crushed by those comments, you were able to stay grounded, to accept that dislike and move forward with your head held high. How different would that feel? You see, when you learn to accept that not everyone will approve of your choices, actions, or even your very existence, you start to free yourself from the chains of people-pleasing. Acceptance is not about giving up. It's about understanding that other people's opinions don't define you. This simple shift in perspective holds so much power. Now, let's dive into this concept. Many of us grew up craving approval, whether it was from our parents teachers or friends. We wanted to be liked, accepted and admired. It's a natural human instinct. We're social creatures after all. But somewhere along the way, this desire for approval can become overwhelming. It can start to shape the decisions we make, the way we present ourselves and even the dreams we choose to follow. Do you remember that time in high school when you changed the way you dressed because a few people made fun of your style, or when you held back from speaking up in a meeting at work because you feared judgment. Those moments are rooted in the fear of being disliked. But here's the truth. There is so much freedom in letting go of that fear. When you stop needing everyone to like you, you open the door to living a life that's true to who you are. You're no longer playing it safe or hiding parts of yourself in an attempt to blend in. You become unapologetically you, and that's where real confidence comes from. As we dive deeper into this journey together, we'll explore how accepting that some people will dislike you isn't a weakness. It's actually a strength. It means you're living with integrity, standing by your values, and not letting the world's noise drown out your own voice. Number two, setting boundaries for healthy interactions. Let's shift gears a bit and talk about boundaries. If you're anything like most people, you've probably experienced situations where someone's criticism or dislike felt overwhelming. Maybe it was a colleague at work who always had something negative to say, or a family member who never seemed satisfied with your choices. The key to maintaining your sense of self in these moments is boundaries, those invisible lines that protect your energy, your mental well-being, and your peace. Picture this, you're in a meeting at work, feeling excited about a new idea you've come up with. 
But then there's that one colleague, let's call him John, who rolls his eyes every time you speak. After the meeting, he pulls you aside and says, that idea will never work. Why do you keep wasting everyone's time? Ouch, right? Instantly, your excitement starts to fade and doubt creeps in. But here's where setting boundaries becomes your lifeline. Instead of absorbing John's negativity and allowing it to derail your confidence, you can set a boundary. A boundary isn't about being harsh or rude. It's about protecting your space and ensuring that you don't let others' negativity take over. In this case, you might respond to John by saying, I appreciate your concern, but I'd prefer if you gave constructive feedback in the meeting so we can discuss it as a team. This simple boundary sets the expectation that if he has concerns, he needs to voice them in a way that's helpful, not hurtful. Now think back to a time when you let someone's negativity get to you. Maybe it was a boss who constantly criticized your work without offering any constructive feedback, or a friend who always made you feel like you weren't enough. Remember how that felt? The anxiety, the frustration, the self-doubt. Boundaries are what allow you to take back control in these situations. By clearly communicating your limits, you protect yourself from being overwhelmed by others' opinions. It's not about shutting people out, but rather about creating a healthy environment where feedback can be given and received without harming your self-esteem. Setting boundaries doesn't come naturally for everyone, though. Many of us have been conditioned to believe that setting limits makes us selfish or difficult. But the truth is, boundaries are a form of self-respect. When you say I'm open to feedback, but it needs to be specific and constructive, you're valuing your time and energy. Number three, mindfulness, observing reactions without judgment. Now that we've explored the importance of boundaries, let's talk about another powerful tool for navigating criticism and dislike mindfulness. Mindfulness is about being fully present in the moment, aware of your thoughts and feelings without judging them. It's a practice that allows you to observe your reactions without being controlled by them, a skill that becomes invaluable when you're faced with negativity or disapproval. Picture this. You've just finished a big presentation at work. You felt confident while delivering it, but afterward, you overhear a co-worker say, I don't think that presentation was very strong. Instantly, you feel a knot in your stomach, your heart starts racing, and your mind begins to spiral with self-doubt. This is where mindfulness comes in. Instead of reacting impulsively or letting that comment ruin your day, mindfulness encourages you to pause. Take a deep breath. Notice how you're feeling, the tightness in your chest, the anxiety creeping up, the flood of negative thoughts. But rather than trying to push those feelings away or reacting defensively, you simply observe them. Ah, I'm feeling anxious because of that comment. No judgment, no immediate action, just awareness. This practice of mindful observation creates a space between the trigger, in this case the criticism, and your response. In that space, you can choose how to react. Maybe after taking a few breaths, you realize that your co-worker's comment wasn't even about your presentation specifically, it was more about their personal preference. Or perhaps you decide that while their feedback stung, it doesn't diminish the overall quality of your work. The key is that mindfulness gives you the power to respond thoughtfully rather than react impulsively. Now, let's rewind a bit and think about a time when you let someone's comment or criticism really get to you. Maybe it was in high school when a classmate made a snide remark about your appearance or more recently when a friend criticized a decision you made. Do you remember how quickly those negative emotions took over? You might have reacted without thinking, maybe snapping back at them or letting their words ruin your entire day. These are the moments where mindfulness could have made all the difference. By simply noticing your emotions without letting them control you, you can take back your power in situations that might otherwise feel overwhelming. 
Curious about how to start practicing mindfulness in your daily life? It's simpler than you might think. The next time you feel the sting of someone's disapproval or a wave of anxiety after hearing criticism, pause. Take a deep breath and focus on the sensations in your body. Where do you feel tension? What thoughts are running through your mind? Instead of trying to fix or change anything, just observe. The more you practice this, the more you'll find that you're able to handle criticism and dislike with greater calm and clarity. Mindfulness isn't about suppressing your emotions. It's about acknowledging them without being swept away. It gives you the space to process your feelings and choose your response, rather than being at the mercy of your immediate reactions. Number four, self-reflection, aligning actions with values. Picture this a quiet evening. You're alone with your thoughts, reflecting on the choices you've made recently. Maybe it's something as simple as how you handled a disagreement with a friend or something bigger, like a career decision. There's a moment of clarity where you begin to wonder, am I really acting in line with my core values? Self-reflection is one of the most underrated tools we have for personal growth, yet it's also one of the most powerful. It's the process of looking inward and honestly assessing our actions, behaviors and decisions. This is particularly important when we face criticism or dislike from others because it allows us to discern whether the feedback we're receiving aligns with who we truly are or if we're being swayed by external pressures. Think back to a time when you made a decision that went against your gut instinct. Maybe it was something small, like agreeing to plans you didn't really want to be part of, or something larger, like pursuing a career path you weren't passionate about because you felt it was expected of you. How did that feel? Did you notice a dissonance between your actions and your values? When we act out of alignment with who we are, we often feel uneasy, unsatisfied, and sometimes even lost. Self-reflection provides a moment of pause in a world that's constantly pushing us to keep moving. It invites us to step back, take a deep breath, and ask ourselves, am I living authentically? When someone dislikes you or criticizes your actions, self-reflection helps you assess whether their opinion holds merit based on your values. Maybe their dislike stems from a fundamental difference in values, and that's okay. Not everyone will share your perspective, and that's what makes life interesting. But if their criticism reveals an area where you've strayed from your values, self-reflection offers a chance to realign and correct course. Remember a time when you made a choice that felt deeply right for you, even if others didn't approve. Perhaps it was a major life decision, moving to a new city, ending a relationship, or starting your own business. At first, you may have faced pushback, maybe even feelings of doubt or fear of rejection. But as you moved forward, there was a sense of peace because deep down, you knew you were acting in alignment with your values. That's the power of self-reflection. It helps you stay grounded in your truth, even when others don't understand or agree with it. As we dive deeper into how to handle criticism and dislike, it's essential to revisit this practice of self-reflection regularly. It's through this lens that we can decide whether the feedback we receive is something we should consider or simply let go of. Aligning our actions with our values isn't just about pleasing others. It's about honoring ourselves. Number five, facing workplace criticism, responding with confidence. Workplaces can be challenging environments when it comes to dealing with criticism. Whether it's a performance review, a colleague's offhand comment, or feedback during a meeting, workplace criticism can sometimes feel like a personal attack. It's easy to take things to heart, especially when we've put in a lot of effort and are passionate about our work. Let's go back to a familiar scene. You're in a meeting, presenting an idea you've been working on for weeks, you feel confident and you've thought through every detail. But then, one of your colleagues interrupts with a critique. 
I'm not sure this approach will work, they say, and suddenly all eyes are on you. Your heart sinks. Maybe your first reaction is to get defensive, or maybe you shrink back, feeling embarrassed or unsure. But here's the thing, how you respond to criticism in the workplace can either elevate your professional growth or hinder it. It's not the criticism itself that defines your trajectory, it's how you handle it. When faced with criticism, the first step is to take a moment before responding. Breathe. Give yourself a beat to process what was said, rather than reacting impulsively. This small pause can make all the difference. By taking a moment, you shift from an emotional reaction to a thoughtful response. After that pause, consider the source of the criticism. Is this person offering constructive feedback aimed at helping you improve, or are they being unnecessarily harsh? Sometimes criticism in the workplace is valid and can help us grow. In those cases, it's important to listen with an open mind, ask questions to clarify their perspective and view the feedback as an opportunity for improvement. But what if the criticism feels unfair or unwarranted? This is where confidence comes in. You don't have to accept every piece of feedback as gospel. If you believe your approach or work was sound, stand by it. You might respond by acknowledging their viewpoint and then explaining your reasoning. For instance, I appreciate your perspective and I'd love to hear more about why you think this won't work. Here's why I chose this approach. By engaging in a constructive dialogue, you maintain your professionalism while also standing firm in your ideas. Now, let's get nostalgic for a moment. Think about the first job you ever had. Maybe it was a part-time gig in high school or your first full-time job after college. Do you remember how intimidating it was to receive feedback back then? Every comment from a boss or co-worker felt monumental and the fear of messing up was ever present. But over time, as you gained experience, you likely realized that criticism isn't the end of the world. It's a natural part of the learning process. Number six. Navigating Disapproval in Personal Relationships Personal relationships are where criticism and disapproval often hit the hardest, whether it's from a partner, a family member, or a close friend. Hearing that someone you care about doesn't agree with your choices can be deeply unsettling. These are the people who know you best, so when they disapprove, it can feel like a personal rejection. Think about a time when someone you loved criticized you. Maybe it was a parent who questioned your life choices or a partner who wasn't supportive of your career goals. How did that make you feel? Did you immediately go on the defensive or did you internalize their criticism and start doubting yourself? It's human nature to seek approval from the people closest to us, which is why disapproval in personal relationships can be so challenging. But here's the reality. Even the people who love us don't always have the same perspective or values. They may criticize or disapprove because they want what's best for us, but that doesn't mean their vision of what's best aligns with our own. In these moments, it's essential to remember that we're each on our own unique journey. Let's say your partner disagrees with a major decision you've made like quitting your job to pursue a passion project or moving to a new city. Their disapproval might come from a place of concern or fear of the unknown. While it's important to listen to their perspective, it's equally important to stay true to your own convictions. You might say, I understand your concerns, but this is something I need to do for myself. By acknowledging their feelings while standing firm in your decision, you show respect for their opinion without compromising your own values. In the end, navigating disapproval in personal relationships often comes down to clear communication. It's about expressing your thoughts and feelings honestly, while also being open to hearing theirs. Not every disagreement has to be a conflict. Sometimes it's just a difference in perspective. Now take a moment to reflect on a time when someone close to you supported a decision you made, even if they didn't fully agree with it. 
Maybe it was a friend who encouraged you to take a leap, or a parent who expressed concern but ultimately stood by your side. That feeling of being supported, even in the face of disapproval, is a powerful reminder of the strength that comes from authentic relationships. Curious about how to strengthen your personal relationships in the face of disapproval? It all starts with empathy. Try to see things from their point of view and acknowledge their concerns. At the same time, don't be afraid to assert your own needs and desires. It's this balance of empathy and assertiveness that fosters healthy, resilient relationships. Number seven, handling social media criticism. Effectively, social media has become a central part of our lives and with it comes the inevitability of public criticism. Whether you're posting personal opinions, sharing creative work, or just engaging with others online, the anonymity and distance that social media provides can make it a breeding ground for harsh and often unwarranted criticism. Let's be honest, receiving negative comments online can hurt, even if you know they're coming from strangers who don't know you personally. It's easy to tell yourself that their opinions don't matter, but when those comments hit, they can feel very real. Picture this, you've just posted something you're proud of, a new piece of art, a thoughtful opinion on a social issue, or even a photo of yourself. You're feeling great about it until the notifications start rolling in. Among the likes and supportive comments, there's a harsh critique. This is terrible. Or, you don't know what you're talking about. Suddenly, your mood shifts. That one negative comment feels like it overshadows all the positive feedback. When facing social media criticism, the first step is to recognize that not all criticism is created equal. Some critiques may be constructive, offering a different perspective or pointing out areas for improvement. Others, however, are simply negative for the sake of being negative. The key is to differentiate between the two. If the feedback is constructive, take it as an opportunity to learn and grow. If it's merely hateful or meant to tear you down, it's important to let it roll off your back. Think about a time when you posted something online and received criticism that felt unfair. How did you respond? Did you engage with the person or did you brush it off? One of the hardest parts about social media criticism is the urge to defend yourself publicly, but often responding to negativity only fuels the fire. Instead, consider taking the high road. Silence can be a powerful response, showing that you're unbothered by the negativity. Of course, it's natural to want to respond, especially when you feel misunderstood. In those cases, consider framing your response in a calm, thoughtful way. For example, I appreciate your perspective, but here's where I'm coming from. This approach can diffuse tension and show that you're open to dialogue without getting defensive. Now, let's get a little nostalgic. Remember the early days of social media when it was all about connecting with friends and sharing life's little moments? There was a sense of innocence back then before the platforms became battlegrounds for public opinion. Today, social media is a much more complex landscape and handling criticism has become a necessary skill. But here's the thing, just because criticism exists doesn't mean you have to let it control how you feel about yourself. At the end of the day, social media is just a small piece of the larger puzzle of life. The opinions of strangers online don't define your worth and the more you remind yourself of that, the more resilient you'll become. Curious about how to build even more resilience in the face of social media criticism? Try setting boundaries with your online presence. Limit the time you spend scrolling through comments and remember to take breaks when the negativity feels overwhelming. By controlling your social media environment, you take back your power and focus on what truly matters. Number eight, cultivating inner peace. Amid disapproval, imagine this, you're sitting in a quiet room, away from the noise and opinions of others. There's a sense of calm that washes over you, 
a moment of peace where nothing outside of you matters. This is the feeling of inner peace, something we all crave, especially when faced with disapproval from others. Cultivating inner peace is not about avoiding criticism or dislike, it's about finding a way to remain centered, even when others disapprove of you. It's the ability to stay grounded in your own truth, despite external pressures. Let's be honest, finding inner peace amid disapproval isn't always easy. There are times when criticism feels overwhelming, and the weight of others' opinions can start to affect your sense of self. But here's where the power of inner peace comes in. It allows you to create a buffer between yourself and the outside world, a space where you can process your emotions without being consumed by them. Think about a time when you were criticized harshly. Maybe it was by someone whose opinion you valued, or maybe it was by a stranger. How did that criticism affect you in the moment? Did it shake your confidence or make you second-guess yourself? Now, imagine if you had been able to tap into a sense of inner peace during that moment. How might your reaction have been different? Cultivating inner peace starts with self-awareness. It's about recognizing when you're being affected by external criticism and choosing to respond from a place of calm rather than reactivity. Meditation, mindfulness, and even simple breathing exercises can help you build this inner resilience. These practices create a mental space where you can observe your thoughts and emotions without being swept away by them. Curious about how to start cultivating inner peace in your own life? Begin with small daily practices, like taking a few moments each day to sit quietly and focus on your breath. Over time, these moments of peace will expand, allowing you to stay centered even in the face of disapproval. Number 9. Building Resilience Through embracing dislike, resilience is one of the most valuable traits we can develop, especially when it comes to handling dislike and criticism. It's the ability to bounce back from challenges, to keep moving forward even when the road gets tough. Think about a time when you faced significant criticism or rejection. Maybe it was a major setback at work, a personal relationship that didn't work out, or a creative project that didn't receive the feedback you hoped for. How did you recover from that experience? What inner strength did you tap into to keep going? Resilience isn't about being unaffected by criticism. It's about learning how to process it and grow from it. Every time someone dislikes you or criticizes you, you have a choice you can either let it tear you down or you can use it as fuel to build yourself up. One way to build resilience is to reframe how you view criticism. Instead of seeing it as a personal attack, try to see it as an opportunity for growth. Ask yourself, what can I learn from this? Even harsh or unfair criticism can offer valuable insights if you approach it with an open mind. Another key to building resilience is practicing self-compassion. When you face criticism, it's easy to be hard on yourself, to internalize the negative feedback and let it affect your self-worth. But resilience comes from being kind to yourself, recognizing that you're doing your best and allowing yourself room to grow and improve. Curious about how to build even more resilience in your life? Start by embracing challenges rather than avoiding them. Number 10. Conclusion. Freedom through authentic living. Living authentically is the ultimate goal for many of us, but it's not always easy. It requires the courage to be yourself, even when others disapprove or criticize you. But the freedom that comes from living authentically is unmatched. When you're true to yourself, you no longer have to seek approval or validation from others. You're free to make decisions based on your own values, rather than trying to please everyone around you. This kind of freedom doesn't happen overnight. It's something you cultivate over time, through self-reflection, resilience, and the ability to handle criticism with grace. But once you've embraced this way of living, you'll find a deep sense of peace and fulfillment. 
Curious about how to start living more authentically? Begin by tuning into your own values and desires. What's truly important to you? What makes you feel most alive? When you align your actions with these values, you'll find that the opinions of others hold less weight. As we've journeyed through the complexities of accepting dislike and navigating criticism, remember that the real power lies in being true to yourself. The freedom to live authentically without the constant weight of seeking approval is where true strength begins. You've learned how to set boundaries, practice mindfulness, and stand tall in the face of disapproval, skills that will serve you not just today, but for the rest of your life. The path to resilience and self-confidence isn't easy, but it's absolutely worth it. If you've made it this far, drop a hundred in the comments. It shows you're part of the top 0.01% who actually finish what they start. You're serious about making real changes in your life, if you're ready to dive deeper and transform your mindset, make sure to join our community by hitting that subscribe button. Together, we'll continue to grow, learn, and become the strongest, most authentic versions of ourselves.